Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I've been making a comprehensive tutorial on the asset browser and I discovered an issue when adding assets to my library. You can easily lose the catalogues made by the original author or yourself, which is really frustrating. Now, admittedly, this was only happening to me because I was trying to be organized. So join me on this journey as I take you step by step through the process of adding assets to your library, fixing broken assets whose catalogues have been lost, and stay with me until the end to find out all about those two critical files that are needed. Now, if you want to follow along or have never used the asset library before, let's start by grabbing some assets to play with. Now, I'm going to download two files from the Blender website. So let's go to blender.org, download, demo files and then if this isn't at the top for some reason you can always click on assets bundles and we're going to download the human base meshes version 1.1 and the cube diorama once those are downloaded i'm also going to download my asset pack uh, my little bundle here which is free and you can find the link at the top of the description this will be a great proxy for fixing a homemade asset in my download folder, you can see we have these three packs already there and I've already unzipped them or extracted them just to save time. And now we have everything ready. Let's hop on over into Blender. Okay, I have a pretty bare bones installation of Blender just to keep things simple. And if you've never looked at the asset browser before, let's add it in place of the timeline at the bottom here. So I'm gonna move my cursor down until we get that double headed arrow, the split between the 3D view and the timeline. And I'm just gonna pull that up slightly. And then we can go over to the top left of the timeline and change the editor type to the asset browser. Now I've gotten quite used to using the keyboard shortcuts. There are loads of them in Blender and I can use Shift and F1 to also flick between the editor types and move myself over to the asset browser. Now the asset browser has a load of predefined stuff. I'm gonna make these icons here a little bit smaller. I'm gonna take them down to 64. I've got my interface blown up quite a bit here and I'm just going to arrange this so I can see two lots, two rows here of assets and then finally and you don't have to do this i'm going to go up to file defaults and save my startup file i'm going to be starting up blender several times and i don't want to have to set this up every single time you may find this useful having this set up timelines really useful for doing animations probably not much else in this case now assets are stored in libraries. Currently we're looking at all assets. So we have a look at this drop down here. We can see it says all current file, which is the file that we're in essentials, which is what blender comes with. And then our user library. Now you can have more than one user library, but we're only going to have one in this video. Underneath that, you'll find the list of catalogs. Now catalogs work in a top down manner. As you can see, we're looking at all of the catalogs. And if we have a look at hair, we'll look at everything that's within the hair catalog. And we can narrow that down even further by looking at the various other catalogs underneath that. And then we have normals. These are just built in to Blender by default. And finally, we have unassigned. And unassigned is where assets end up getting dumped when they don't have or have lost their catalogs. Let's have a look at the libraries themselves. To open up Blender's preferences, we can use the edit menu at the top here, or as you can see, control and comma. Once this opens up, you'll want to go down to where it says file paths on the left-hand side. It's nearly at the bottom. You'll probably see a folder just here under asset libraries with a path that actually doesn't exist on your computer if you've not used assets before. If it hasn't, I suggest making that directory or navigating with this little folder icon to a place where you want to store your asset blend files. You can add more libraries with the plus button at any time, but we'll just use one today. If you don't have that directory like me, let's go ahead and create it now. I'm gonna click on this folder icon. You can see it's gone to Mike's PC documents. There's no blender and assets. So I'm gonna click this little icon here to create a new directory. And we're gonna rename it straight away blender. And then we're going to go into that folder again, click this little icon and call it assets. Now you could call this anything you like. It would be the library folder that you'll be using for this particular library. And I'm going to click accept there. And now our user library has an actual place on our computer. Great. Now that we've done that, let's get some assets in and ready to use. Now there are a few ways to import assets into the asset browser. I will cover two straightforward methods. And if you want to know more about the asset browser, remember, Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when I release the full in-depth tutorial covering everything in the asset browser. So going back over to my downloads, let's copy these folders into our newly created assets folder. This is a method I see lots of people talking about. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it was documents, blender, assets, 
and we're going to paste it straight in there. So we've just taken those files we've downloaded and put them straight into the folder we've just created. Let's go back over to Blender. Now you can see here the asset browser hasn't changed at all. Let's click refresh. Often when you introduce new assets into Blender, you do have to restart Blender. So let's do that now. I'm just going to create a new file and there we go. Brilliant. And we can see some of the extra things that have come in along with it, including some of my assets. There's ones here from the base meshes and I can see some from the diorama, but they're all under unassigned. So how do we go ahead and keep the previously made catalogs? If we go back over to our Blender assets folder and go into one of these asset bundles, we can see here that not only do we have a blend file, but we also have this text file. That's where this Blender Asset Cats file comes into play. Now you can only have one of these files and it has to be in the root folder of the asset library. So in this case, it needs to be in this assets folder. So let's use this cube diorama as an example and let's place this file. I can simply click and drag and hopefully drop it. Yep into the assets folder, or you can copy and paste it there. And we can now see that we've got Blender Asset Cats from the cube diorama in the root folder. Let's go back to Blender. Now, nothing's happened in Blender. Let's try the refresh button first. Again, that doesn't seem to have done anything. So let's reload the blend file. You can see why I wanted this down here now. And you can see we've got some extra catalogs. That's exactly what we want to be able to do. And we can see if we go to object, we've got all the art supplies and other stuff from the diorama in the right place. If we open that up, we can see that we can go through those sub catalogs. And we've also got material here as well. So we've got those other assets coming across from the diorama file. Brilliant. But can you see the problem here? Not only do we not have the catalogs from the other assets, but we cannot put all of those catalog files on top of one another. That won't work. So here's my solution to this issue. While relatively quick, it is manual and potentially prone to error. We go back over, let's minimize this for the second, to our file system here. I really do want folders in here for extra levels of organization, especially since I'm creating assets myself. I want that level of organization. However, this was my downfall. If these were all have their blend files and I'd added them differently, it would be working. And we'll get to that in a moment. But if you do want to organize like this, there's a very quick solution. This Blender Assets Cats file, all we need to do is open it up and go to the other ones that we want to add to it and just copy and paste the information everything below where it says version one. So if I go to the human base meshes, open up that blender file, uh, open up that, sorry, text file and copy everything below version one into the one I currently have open. Now, this may be different for you if you've got a different text editor. I've got tabs at the top so I can very easily just click and drag and I can do the same for my assets cats. It's going to open up here. I'm going to copy that, paste it in and save. Now, all being well, we should be able to go back over into Blender, hit the refresh button, and hopefully there won't be anything in a, unassigned. That's a good sign. We can see we've got tools here. We've got matcap materials, and we've got the shader group. Now, this tools down here, I thought that would be within the matcap materials. Perhaps I didn't align things properly. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Now, have you found that useful so far, or you just like me torturing myself? then give the video a like. Now, if you don't care about all the extra organization that I want to do, let me show you the most compatible way. So first of all, let's go to our Blender Assets folder and clear that out. Obviously only if you've uh, not got anything else important in there, we're just testing it at the moment. And let's go back to our Downloads folder. Now, having a look at the individual folders here, if we go into our Cube Diorama and have a look at the Blend file, notice what it's named. It's Cube underscore Diorama. If we go to the assets that I've made or indeed the human base meshes, we see that there's an underscore bundle at the end. Let's open that up directly and have a look if anything's changed. So when we have a look at our asset browser here, do you notice anything that's been added? There's this drop down here that says copy bundle to asset library. And we've only got one library, so the user library shows up. We can select that and then click copy to asset library. Now, what we should find is if we go down to user library, hmm, it says unassigned. What, what's going on there? If that does happen to you, if you go up to all, you'll see that human base meshes is kind of in the right place. And if you go to current file, it no longer has the add to library. This is Blender just being a tad slow, I believe. So all we need to do is shut down Blender 
and then reopen it again and cross our fingers that it works. And we should find that, no, we don't have it in the right place. So let's just try that process again. I don't know why it does this. It's caused a couple of repeats of records. Copy bundle to asset library, copy to asset library. It says it's now added it to the library. Let's check under user library, not there. Let's restart Blender. And it is now finally in the right place. So I have found occasionally you have to try and add something twice. I don't know why it does that, but we can now alter the file name of the cube diorama and hopefully we won't have to go through the same rigmarole. So I'm gonna to go to the file, I'm gonna press F2 or right click and rename and it needs to be underscore bundle. Uh, and the bundle needs to be in lower case. So there we go. So if we double click on that, we should now get a drop down that we didn't have before, the copied bundle to asset library, and I'm going to copy to asset library. Okay, now if we go to the user library, Oh, we still don't see it. So let's just open up Blender refresh and see if it's updated the library appropriately. No, it's added the assets again, but it's not updated the catalog file. So let's open up the one from the downloads, copy bundle to asset library and copy to asset library. Says it's done it. Let's reopen Blender. And there we go. We've now got the objects in there as we'd expect. Now, of course, mine would go through the same process again, but I want to actually envisage it not having a catalog file either. I've forgotten to upload it like the first versions or you've lost it or it's corrupt or something along those lines. You can actually rebuild this yourself. So let's go ahead and delete that category file. Now, when we open up the bundle, it will kind of work. We will have the copy bundle to asset library, but everything will be unassigned. So let's go and sort that out. What we need to do is click the little plus here and it will add a new catalog. Once we've done that, we can rename it. Now, actually looking at how things are structured, I'm going to call this Mad Michael's Asset uh, Pack. That would be Map. Michael's Asset Download is Mad. There we go. <laughs> um, but I'm going to call this Mike's Assets or something along those lines because you will end up with multiple folders called material. And if you don't know where they're from, that can be difficult. So I think I'm going to name it like this for the moment. Then I'm going to click the plus next to Mike's assets so I can have my mat cap materials. And I hope I can keep up with my own speaking materials. So just double clicking enables you to rename. Then there's a shader group and then there's my tools. So I'm going to pop tools, make sure it's under Mike's assets. And I'm just going to put a shader group in as well. As I expand my free asset pack, there'll be extra things in here. So if you're watching this in the future, it might be different. Uh, shader group because this is the group that allows you to use your own matcap materials and not just the ones I've made. Now, everything's in unassigned. And because we've only got two other different things, I'm going to select everything and put them in matcap materials. Now they're assigned, so they won't appear in here anymore. Notes the star. These are all catalogs that are currently unsaved. But I'm going to drag the mapping group over to the shader group and the text info over to the tools. Now, if you have a look here at the downloads, Michael's assets download is just by itself. There's no catalog file. Let's go ahead and save with the little floppy disk icon here and go check again. There's now a category file. Excellent. So what we should be able to do at this point is copy the bundle over to the asset library, copy to asset library, close that down, open up Blender, and will we have to do it again? Let's see if it's gone in one go this time. Hey, look at that, Mike's assets materials, shader group, and tools is all in one place. So there we go. That's how you would go ahead and fix that if it was to go wrong. Now, assets are a really useful tool. And if you want to learn more, check out this video next.